Hey y'all, Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. Okay, I've gotten a lot of questions ever since we started selling this uh, Billy's Bone Sauce. This stuff kicks buck. Ever since we started selling this, a uh, number of people have asked, what will it work on? What won't it work on? Look, the one thing I do know and I, I pretty well guarantee is that, look, it works on deer. This stuff kicks buck. <laughs> but uh, there's evidence that it works on rabbits and any number of things. What I'm finding out, and I don't know if I should give this way or not, but by and large, it seems it works better the greater variety of bones that I have in this thing. Okay, right now in this bone sauce, it's made with pig bones, beef bones, uh, chicken bones, and as of late, a whole lot of deer bones because it's that time of year, right? Now it was kicked up before. It did a pretty darn respectable job with all the other bones. Um, but ever since I got my hands on some deer bones, I'm telling you what, I think this stuff's been kicked up a notch. Now. Uh, for some reason, there's been some confusion as to how much to put on, uh, where to put it on. Uh, there was one person that reached out to us and said, hey, this stuff didn't work. Then I find out they diluted it with water and poured it on the lawn. Um, that's not how you want to use this stuff, folks. If you do dilute it, you want to use some kind of animal fat. But look, I made this stuff super potent, concentrated. It's why that process that we invented takes so long. It's... Um, Sepp Holzer, by the way, because I know somebody's going to bring this up. Sepp Holzer basically made the world aware of this stuff. This stuff apparently has been used for millennia in Austria, Germany, and stuff like that for the very reason of keeping pests, primarily deer, away from your fruit trees. I think Coco just gave me an amen. All right, boy, take it easy. Anyway, I'm going to show you the best way to go about this. And I got a four-ounce jar right here, and we're just going to see... I don't know if I'll see how many trees I can get done, but I'm going to show you how we put this on. Um, right here, we got we got a pretty big cage on this one, and we got it on some of the others as well. Also, some of these others I just pruned a little while ago. I still haven't pruned this one. And if you want to, by the way, know how to do the pr uh, pruning with a more methodical way where it's not just intuitive, check out, check out what we're doing on Patreon because I show... I think a pretty comprehensive pruning video for the size trees we have. In the future, I'll do it on bigger ones. But right now, folks, look, I'm going to take this stuff in here. It's better when it's a little bit warm and it's a little bit soupy like this because it will solidify a little bit when it gets cold. So basically, I'll leave it in the truck. Look, y'all, when the leaves are off this, this is why fall is the best time to do this because I don't have to worry about any leaves. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because there, if there are leaves on there, it's a little bit too caustic. And the stuff basically will, you know, it'll kill your leaves, okay? So, look, I'm not even going to play around. I'm not diluting anything. You can if you want. That's not what I'm doing. I'm putting this stuff on super, super thick. I remember the first time when we first put this on, I, I put it, I didn't even trust it. I didn't believe. I wasn't so sure that this stuff would work so well. So, I put it on stakes next to the trees. And just that act alone... Make sure I'm not killing my gills that's stepping around in here. Just that little act alone. Basically, the deer didn't even come around then just by putting stakes alongside the trees. The next time we did it, I told Michelle, foolishly, I made like, it took, it, this stuff takes a long time to make. So I gave Michelle a, I'd spent weeks, I think, making this stuff up and I gave her a big pail of it. And I was in a rush and I said, look, go out there and do these trees. And so... <laughs> She went out here and it was about this time of year. I walked out, I was doing something. I walked out and I could see every last one of these trees shining. I mean, they were blinging like a disco ball out here in the, in the sunlight. They were literally, it looked like a winter wonderland in broad day with no snow of this stuff just shining up the hill. I put my hand over my mouth and I'm like, Oh no, I just expected her to kind of hit it here and there, but no, there was not a square inch of these trees that wasn't touched. So that freaked me out. And the, okay, obviously the deer haven't come back. And uh, well, they survived and they did quite well. Now, some people are saying, hey, don't go too crazy with this stuff. Look folks, we put it everywhere. Now I will say, you don't want to necessarily go any higher than browsing height. In fact, I probably went quite a bit high there anyway. But I like to keep it. I'm going to hit. Look, I'm not even playing around, y'all. 
I'm hitting every bit of this bad boy. I could go ahead and take this thing off and I think, you know what, I think I'll just go ahead and do that. And as a little side note, folks, I like these things here as far as, got this little trick from um, the uh, the pro orchardist himself, Stefan Subkoviak. We use these, you can use a number of things, but these things grow with the tree and they seem to be, they last indefinitely. Now, I run this stuff all the way up and down. Look, any rabbits, any voles, anything you got like that that might be a problem, I usually hit. I hit these trees all the way up and down the chimney. And that's what this is called, really, the chimney, huh? I hit this stuff all the way up and down here. These trees haven't been hit. You know, instead of, instead of going up and down here and showing you every little... You know just how far i can get on one bone sauce one thing of bone sauce look look how much i used out of there maybe one tenth maybe maybe a little less one tenth of what's in there and i got this tree blinging like a like a disco ball so anyway let me go ahead and put this down for a moment stick that over there put this back now other places we've done it and we got some out for testing right now there's people that have reached out to me that said they had, you know, they had chipmunks chewing up uh, parts of their cars, <laughs> like gas, fuel lines of the cars and stuff. I've been to three county fairs and the hog calling, but I ain't never heard of nothing like that. So I sent them some to go find out if it would work on that. So I'm waiting to find out. There's other people that have bear problems too, and they've been wanting to, wondering about that. I don't know. I mean, I really, I really don't know. I know that we have it. I have not once in a place where people are hunting bear all around me, uh, it's bear season right now, as I understand it. Um, I have not yet, and ever since we put this stuff out, I have not seen a bear. Now, does it work on bears? I don't know. Because truth is, I'm trying to get a hold of some of these bear hunters out here. They're a very elusive bunch. Um, let's see if, this is gonna sound like a weird request, but I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on some bear bones and we'll start putting this stuff out for bear testing it seems that the bones of whatever animal i put in here seems to turbocharge the mix against that animal they want they don't want to mess with it um that's it in a nutshell y'all so look we got this bone sauce and if you want to know like i said the best time of year to put this stuff on is in the fall and the winter it is the best time um wow this thing really does shine oops missed a spot right there and we got it so there you have it, folks. I mean, we got the four ounce, and like I said, this is just one little tree. Now, clearly, you're going to use considerably more. This is a small tree, a uh, three-year-old tree. Actually, more like a two-year-old tree. But, I mean, the, the, wider your, the wider your trunk, obviously, the more material, the more stuff you're going to use. In fact, if it is a trunk, let's say it's this wide, I would run a bead down here, 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 and here. Now, we've also... Now, I made a... a <laughs> I don't know if it was a mistake. I don't know if it was a blessing. I'm not sure. But every one of these wooden posts on our woven wire that goes all the way around this fence I had Michelle go ahead and hit this whole front. Look, y'all, we have not seen deer, turkey, anything. So it can be a double-edged sword. If you want to have wildlife corridors, you need to factor that in. Frankly, um, if I want to hunt deer or turkey or anything, I got to go to the top of this mountain because they ain't going to be found down here. You can overdo this stuff. If you want wildlife corridors, you want them to come in there. Well, don't be using this stuff because honestly, it's good for 30, some say up to 50 years. And guess what? When it's on wooden surfaces like this, it doesn't need to be reapplied. Although I think, I don't know if <sighs> honestly, just my intuition says hey when this thing triples in size maybe want to reapply it that way but hey 30 to 50 years yeah i'm gonna go with it so anyway like i said i didn't invent this stuff i think we just made it much much better than the original version and if you want it folks we got it at the website just reach out if you got any questions about it just ask the questions but here it is bone sauce 101 and the best time of year to do it so like i said you got corridors you don't want them in maybe not maybe not paint this stuff all the way around your property so even on the T post, it seems to have held up, but on the wooden surfaces, I know this stuff ain't going anywhere. So, uh, like I said, a double-edged sword, but it will, it has, and it, it does seem to be working quite well. So folks, if you need it, you know where to find us. 
So until next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.